At one point, this 2003 Mercedes SL500 used to have an MSRP of over $100,000. Surprisingly now, you can get it for a mere bargain at about, I think, seventeen dollars to $20,000, but you also inherit all the problems from 20 years of wear on a $100,000 Mercedes. The problem we're gonna be dealing with today happens to do with the, uh, rear end of the car. Unfortunately, the hard top convertible, the main focal point of this car, no longer wants to open because of a small faulty problem with it. Long story short, this car left me stranded for over two hours until I was able to figure out how to close it because it was stuck halfway up. But today, we're gonna try to fix it so I can actually use the car for its intended purpose. Thank you for calling Mercedes-Benz of Fort Myers. This call may be recorded. Yes, the uh, convertible, the, the convertible top uh, won't open fully on the Mercedes. It gets stuck halfway, and the kind of like the leaves that fold out to close over, one just like hanging. Four ninety one ninety eight would be the labor. So about five hundred bucks plus the part. Okay, perfect, thank you so much. Over $600 to replace something we're practically going to do for only 40 bucks, and hopefully it takes no more than 30 minutes, an hour. Now, supposedly the reason why the convertible top no longer works is because the soft close feature on the trunk breaks at some point, and then people tend to slam it shut, and that breaks part of the convertible top. As you can see, I fix that like this, but, but the convertible top still doesn't work. Now, from what I can tell, the reason this convertible top won't close is because of these leaves here, or wings, whatever you want to call it. Now, as you can see, this one is kind of, for the most part, pretty tight to the roof of the car, even though there's a little bit of play. And as you can see, this one isn't. This is supposed to be all the way here. And because this is down, it's not pressing a switch, which is at the top, which would tell the convertible top to close fully. Now, of course, I'm not 100% certain that this is going to fix the problem, but from all my research, everything kind of points to this. Now, let me show you what this is for those that maybe have the same problem and would like to order it. The part number is 230-750-0111, and it's the convertible top cover repair kit. And this is kind of what it looks like. It's to replace this bar that you can see is already here, right here. This is supposedly failing or bending, and we're gonna take it off and see if that's actually the problem. As you can see, the reason why the convertible top doesn't wanna to close is because it thinks this is still open. In order for the convertible top to close, there's a switch right here, which you can see in here, that gets pressed, and when it's pressed like that, then the convertible top will open completely. But when it's like this, it's open still, and it's telling the system not to open. So the first thing I did was unscrew the bracket that holds the leaf to the car. It's held down by three 10 millimeter bolts. And once it's unscrewed, you can actually slide it out of the way, which will give you access to the connector on the side. You have to remove the plastic cover first, and then you'll be able to disconnect the connector. I also found it handy to use a pick to help unplug it. All right, so with everything unscrewed and that, I can probably bend this over here. Now just, for safekeeping, I'm gonna put this back on here. So now that we have everything freed up, in order to access this bracket, I believe there are two screws on the back. There's one right here on the top, and then I believe one in that hole at the bottom that we have to take out, and then this should theoretically slide off. I unscrewed the final torque screws from behind the bracket and carefully separated the pieces. Surprisingly, it turns out this bracket was already replaced by the prior owner, as the bracket is usually thinner from factory. But even with the replacement part installed, it still seems as though slamming the trunk without the soft close feature has continued to cause the inner track to skip forward on the gear and misalign the leaf from its original spot, not allowing the convertible top to open. So I just want to show you the problem. As you can see, this is the gear right here, and this is the bracket that goes on top of it, just like that. Now, when the leaf opens up to close on top of the convertible, when the convertible opens, you can see it moves with it, and it catches. But the problem is the old assembly got so worn down on the inside that it gave play to this piece which kind of floats up and it doesn't actually meet this and it could skip. So this might be at the end 
right here and it won't allow this to open any further because it's hitting the end of the bracket here. That's a problem. So that's why this needs to get fixed, especially when this is hanging theoretically upside down. Now things are looser. You can see how this is now a problem and it doesn't fit directly in it. So working backwards, I reinstalled the metal gear and decided to take the leaf off the assembly as it makes it easier to put everything back on. Now the leather trim is held down by just a few plastic clips surrounding it, so it's pretty easy to pop off. Then you can remove the two screws which holds the leaf trim to the actual assembly. With the leaf out of the way, I reinstall the assembly to the bracket by installing the two screws that came with it in the kit. And then I could plug the sensor back in, install the cover, and mount it back on the trunk of the car. All right, make sure that this is not underneath this or you're going to break it. So make sure this is above. And now we can install this piece, however this goes, I believe. Mm, we're getting closer, like this. Yeah, just like that. That's how this is supposed to get mounted. Lastly, I reinstalled the leaf, making sure to line it up exactly how it was before, screwed it down, and popped the leather trim back in place. Now, unfortunately, there's still a little bit of play, but the reason is because in order for me to get this top down, when, uh, when, the, when it broke on me, I had to loosen this up right here. So now I'm gonna tighten it up with a 17 millimeter and a three quarter inch ratchet. And I'm going to get this tight so that this can get tight up to here. And we'll see, that should ideally be what happens. So once you free this nut with the 17, you can go ahead and tighten this down with our three quarters. So you can see by me turning that, this is getting a lot less, a lot more tight. You can see it's barely falling now when before it was on the floor. So I'm just gonna give it a couple more spins around and we should be good. I mean, I feel pretty comfortable kind of with it how it is. I'd say, that's about good. And we are making contact with the button, so let's tighten this down with the 17 mil. That little lock nut right there. It should be good. Yeah, that's tight. That ain't going anywhere. Look at the difference from this to how it was. Oh, just really quick, as you can see, this is snug on there, just like this one. This is also snug. It's not going anywhere, so theoretically, it should open the convertible now. So just a tip before you go out and fix this yourself, if you buy the Euro parts uh, repair kit and you don't buy the Mercedes parts, because I have a feeling the Mercedes parts is already like this, they send you this bracket and it's not threaded. The tool holes here are not threaded, which is absurd. I don't know why they just don't do it themselves, but they send you these little extra screws, which now I realize what they're for because I thought they were just extra, but they send you the silver ones and those are used to thread the holes. You put it in and then you use a, uh, like a drill and you drill in, but remember to spray it with some WD-40, some lube, so that it goes through cleanly. And that's how you thread it. And then they send you extra screws that are black, like the original ones that the car comes with. And then you put the, these new upgraded screws in. So just a tip, because pain in the ass, I thought they sent me like a defective product. No, they never threaded it. They, cheaped out. I guess that's what you get for saving 10, 20 bucks and not just buying the OEM repair kit.
keep that in mind. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you wanna see more content like this, or if you're interested in seeing my rebuilding series on my Volkswagen Golf R, then make sure to check out my other videos here on the channel. Otherwise, make sure to smash the like button, turn on post notifications, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Right, I forgot to put the clip on, so everything's got to come off again. Whoopee! So nice. Now I gotta fucking get this off. Pull me closer.